Hello everyone, thank you very much for watching my preview videos and today I'm going to talk about the Bayonet Type 58 from Czechoslovak People Army. There is a uh, several different reviews uh, on the YouTube and dozen of comments. Uh, so maybe you are thinking why I'm going to talk about this for today. But I was really surprised uh, how many mistakes, misunderstanding and rumor is shared through these videos. So I decided to show you my bayonet and talk about it a little bit. So if you are interested in that, see the intro and go back to talk about that. The Bayonet uh, 58 was developed as an accessories for the Czechoslovakia assault rifle SA-58. And by the way, the SA-58 rifle is a not copy of Kalashnikov uh, 47 and uh, even it's uh, not a refinement of the Kalashnikov. Even although many reviews uh, tested both and reporting that the SA-58 rifle is better. But uh, the SA-58 uh, assault rifle was developed in between 1956 and 1958 by Mr. Chermark. Uh, when he uh, got uh, the final or uh, basic technical specification of the uh, rifle to be developed from uh, Czechoslovakia Ministry of National Defense in 1956 and uh, because uh, he presented this rifle after two years of development in 1958 first that is comes and be named or being named uh, SA-58. So here it is, the Bayonet 58 as an accessories of assault rifle SA-58 made in Czechoslovakia. If you look on this version, it's equipped with the uh, letter sheet. And uh, if you will look inside, the bayonet itself is uh, not small. The overall length of the bayonet is a 285 millimeters, and the length of the blade of the bayonet is uh, 173 millimeters. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if the thickness is uh, enough visible over here, but the, the thickness of the blade uh, I can measure very quickly. Uh, it's uh, yes, it's about five millimeters over there. The most important thing uh, which we need to uh, talk about as a first is that there was really a lot of variations of uh, these bayonets over the years. The first, what you can find on the market or in collections uh, or, or uh, in the military, in between military staffs, is uh, the differences over there. The ear version or earless version had not over here the finger guard. So this finger guard, which I have over here on my later version, was missed. But uh, years after, somewhere around, about, uh, or around 1965 or 70, uh, they started to, uh, to produce uh, the new version with this uh, finger guard over here. So the grip, the grip is much more safety and much more comfortable. 
So there are two versions with or without the finger guards. The second important thing which we can find on the Bayonet 58 and differences and variations in fact are the type of the handles. The earliest version of the handles were made from the wood. It was hard wood and uh, it was very high quality and uh, probably also the handmade. Uh, not polished uh, but uh, very smooth and uh, the military enthusiasts and staffs are uh, li really like it so the first type of the handle over here is uh, the hard wooden handle on the bayonet the second which is very rare and I have to say I saw only two or three pieces and I never had in my hands uh, is the full metal handle on the bayonet. So as same as the wooden part is there over here the metal part. So it's very heavy and very rooked and uh, the people are saying that they are most rooked uh, the bayonets uh, in the Czechoslovakia army uh, during the years made. And the last one is a uh, this uh, uh, this part or this version of the bayonet, which is made uh, from uh, protruded small pieces of the wood, mixed uh, with some epoxy, and pressed with a high pressure together in the form. So it means that uh, it's making very very nice. A structure on the handle and of course the reason why they uh, made it from the mass or uh, protruded material over here is that it's because it's much cheaper than the metal one or the wooden one so there are three different type of handles on the bayonet 58 which are available over here and which you can find on the market the third important thing on the bayonet is uh, that in the earless version or earless version the lot of bayonets was done as a short or a half tank which means that the blade was finished over here and the rest was just a handle. So depends on which kind of version you had, I mean the version of the handle, uh, you had the one piece, it was not from the two pieces screwed together, but only one piece of the handle, wooden or uh, the protruded, uh, uh, the mass uh, epoxy glued together and pressed together the handle or the full metal handle was inserted on, on uh, the metal part over there and was screwed in this part. Uh, it's very easy uh, to define which kind of version you have because there is just only one place where it's going through to the metal. But over here we have a two because the second version, which is in my case, is a full tank. So you can see this is the full tank Bayonet 58 version. And again, you can find the Bayonet full tank in three different handles version. And again, you can find that some of them has the finger guard over here and some of them not. So. Another two versions you can find is a short or half tank, how to say, and full tank, which is the latest version, which was probably started in production in 1970 or something like that, in 70s, I guess. The first complaint which I noticed on the YouTube uh, 
in several videos. Uh, was that it's not full tank and uh, that there is a high risk of crackling uh, the handle over here in case of some uh, heavy or uh, hard job. So I have to say this is the only because this is the version which is short or half tank and which is not uh, the full tank. If you have a full tank version like this you will have not the problem. The also important thing is that if you are uh, the operating the with the bayonet it's not a knife. So if the people are complaining that uh, the bayonet as a half tank is not usable and uh, the crackling of, of, the, of the handle is very danger. Uh, it means that uh, they are didn't understood the, the, the original design or uh, uh, dedicated function of the bayonet because uh, the bayonet means throwing tool. The throwing means that if you are uh, trying to make attack uh, from uh, the lower or the middle part or if you would like to get uh, the top uh, side attack uh, so in this case uh, you are using this uh, uh, this uh, bayonet as a throwing tool so throwing to the body by the way the here is a ribbon over here is a ribbon and there is uh, the right there is a right place to throwing uh, to the body you know to going through the body uh, the second the second part if you would like to get uh, uh, through the body is also here so it means from both sides of the ribbon over here close the neck or if you would like to uh, to use it as uh, the weapon for the attack from the lower side the lower part is over there you know so in both cases you are going uh, through as a throwing tool not as a knife so for this case it's not necessary uh, to have a full tank, but okay, they make the full tank after in 70s, so uh, just now is a heavy rook. So uh, this is a first complaint. The second complaining uh, on the YouTube I found uh, is the blade. The lot of YouTubers or uh, the people are uh, laughing to this uh, uh, blade and they are talking about the, uh, the blade uh, like about the child proof blade that and they are complaining that you can see you can see over here it's not sharp definitely not sharp for that case uh, I can say this is again misunderstanding this is again uh, the point which was not well understood in the basic principles because the bayonet means uh, throwing tool as I said already and uh, if uh, you are going to use uh, as a uh, throwing tool means you not need to have uh, so much uh, sharp the blade over here the, this bayonet is not dedicated for uh, uh, the cutting techniques like uh, sword okay like sword or uh, like the knife okay so if you would like to use a like sword or knife you need to sharp of course sharpening of course but this one is not dedicated primarily as a knife or a sword so uh, the techniques which was uh, trained and uh, for which uh, was all the the people in army and military staffs and the other staffs uh, was uh, uh, quite often trained was just uh, the techniques for the throwing into the body into some materials the second important things regarding the sharpening the blade is uh, the understanding uh, the deployment in uh, Czechoslovakia in 50s 60s and 70s so regarding the deployment in uh, Czechoslovakia in communist uh, era in between 1950 
1970 or even 80 and 90 in fact uh, it's important to understand that there was uh, several groups except the military staffs uh, which have uh, been issued with the uh, assault rifles and these uh, bayonets to be trained. The important thing is to understand that these groups was not the military staff but the civilians. It was uh, the civil defense, uh, people, militia and a uh, lot of other groups. And uh, they also trained or be trained uh, with the rifles and the bayonets but it was outside of the war it was not embattled it was not in the battle uh, or any uh, battle conflict so it means that all the civilians people and groups uh, uh, was trained only uh, because of making the psychology war against the enemy against the abroad enemies coming for uh, the Warsaw Pact. So for that reason and for the reason I talked about that it's not a knife but uh, it's uh, the throwing tool, bayonet. For these two reasons it was designed to be not sharpened and uh, it was uh, just used as a training tool. But regarding the sharpening the blade on this bayonet, believe me or not, I know about the several uh, infantries and the groups in the military which been issued with the real sharpened bayonets for uh, ready to be used in the battle or in the war. And also a lot of uh, the military staffs or a lot of soldiers uh, during uh, their service in the army uh, sharpened them privately. Another complaint on the YouTube is uh, the letter sheet itself. A lot of people is complaining that uh, the letter is uh, very tough, very uh, tight, very hard and it's uh, even not possible uh, to look over here because uh, the hole is far away. It's again misunderstanding. If you know uh, how to behave uh, the letter sheet or uh, the letter itself, so uh, you know that it's going to be soft and it's going to be uh, more elastic and mainly stretched by the time. So uh, there is a risk that it will be losing if uh, this part will be stretched by the time. So of course, if it's quite new, it's a bit hard to lock it, but it will be okay uh, if you will use it uh, for several months, believe me. So design is okay, and this is just misunderstanding again. The last one, if I remember, was the angled sheet. For the bayonet. Yes, this is angled, but a lot of people complain that it's not possible to remove it here on the right side. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's not right, it's, not, it's a misunderstanding again, because it's in original design to have it on the left side, because if you are the right hand operator or right soldier, you will remove it, you know, from the left side. You will remove it on the from the belt on the left side by right hand. So everything is okay. Everything is designed well. That just is misunderstood how the principles are uh, designed or how uh, it was uh, designed. So uh, in that case, even the angle on the shield is correct. So that's all from my side for today. Thank you very much for your watching my video and uh, please, uh, if you want, subscribe and like it. And I hope that you will stay tuned. Take care.